Good morning. Uh, welcome to another Vintage View webinar. Today we've got a brand new piece of content launching for the first time. This is a 30-minute guide to, to marketing. Uh, it's a lot that we're going to try and get in here, but the hope is you can leave today with some actionable items that can help you literally today, if not tomorrow, uh, starting improving your, your marketing tactics and strategies. Um, everything we're going to be discussing today is really meant to be something that you can do hands-on if you're a small business owner, even in the absence of having a uh, marketing department or marketing people on staff. We do one of, this is one of six webinars that we offer on a rotating monthly basis. Uh, we just finished up a couple of them. Actually, pretty much most of the month is, is now done. But if you want to catch any of these other wine cellar design trends, how to sell, planning versus active or passive wine sellers, and of course, the Vintage View product knowledge, we'll be offering those again uh, toward the end of the month and into June, vintageview.com backslash get dash trained. If you uh, have been on our calls before, we have everyone muted uh, just so we can kind of get through this in a, a reasonable time. And uh, if you have any questions, please pop them into the, the, the group chat or private chat and I will do my best to get them. Uh, before I get into this, let me just say that everyone on here is officially a guinea pig as this is the first time that we've done a run through this. Uh, I would encourage any feedback before, during or after so that we can get an idea of how these, these concepts are landing and if we're going at the right pace. This is one of the most difficult ones for me to actually write and give. With our Vintage U product knowledge, they're a lot more focused and I'm able to understand real quickly what to get out to the, the community. Here, this is essentially my marketing team and I trying to get um, everything we know in marketing into a 30 minute segment. <laughs> so there was a lot of uh, cutting and, and pasting to, to figure out what would work. Just a little bit about Vintage U because we're gonna talk about brand, so it's important that we also let you know about our brand throughout. Uh, we lead off all of our calls with just a reminder of who Vintage View is. Vintage View is the company that modernized wine cellar design. We created the Label Ford Metal Wine Rack in 2001, patented it, it and have uh, served as the industry leader for design and build professionals like yourselves for the last 19 years. We actually celebrated 19 years in business about a week and a half ago, so we're really proud of that. If you've been on our things before, I haven't done a big thing of, of saying who I am because I've been talking about the wine racks, but since we're talking about branding and marketing, figure a little bit about my background so you can understand that uh, a lot of these things are coming from a place of experience. Uh, my name is Jacob Harkins. I am the VP of Global Marketing at Vintage View. Uh, I've been here about six years uh, leading the charge with all our branding efforts and working with a small team of creatives to really get out great messaging. Prior to that, I, I worked in the ad agency world. I owned my own ad, ad agency and worked for a, a Boulder a company called uh, Good Oak Communications. I've worked on a number of accounts uh, doing creative strategy, branding, Hyatt, Colorado Wine, Broward College accounts, among a few. I've worked with tourism boards, the uh, New Orleans, uh, City of New Orleans, uh, Seattle, and various. I'm also a journalism washout. I used to wake up every day, drink a lot of coffee, and write uh, stories at deadline for newspapers like the Telluride Daily News, the Aurora Sentinel, and, and other major Colorado publications. So I've got about 20 years in general experience in content and messaging. What we're going to cover today, I've broken this into five sections. Any one of these five sections could easily be a three-hour webinar. What I'm hoping to do today is give you a, a, a very high level idea of what these things should mean to you and how you can do things actionable today so that they're actually of value to you. You could spend tens of thousands of dollars with an agency, a consultant to get a lot of these answers, and you might very well find that's the right thing to do either now or down the line. However, we can do a lot of things here without spending that money and, and without getting in that investment. You'll see two logos here, right? The idea here, and we're gonna get into this, um, and, and I hope you can walk away with this being, a brand is not a logo. A brand is not a logo. So just think about that. What we're gonna try and do here is under, get the fundamental steps with how when you're engaging with your, your potential customers, your clients, to have them understand the value behind that logo and to give them kind of that compelling reason to interact and engage and, and hopefully purchase your products. So with that, we're gonna jump right into brand. So again, it's not just a logo. A lot of people get stuck on that. You can pay an agency tens of thousands of dollars to create a logo. Great, they have value, but it's all the other nuanced pieces that build up to that that are gonna make your product, your service more sellable. Um, at Vintage View, I've never been like, I, I inherited our logo. I think it's a fine logo. I would have probably done it differently. However, I don't think it makes a bit of difference of how well we can sell a wine rack. 
I think it's about the, the services we provide, the products we provide, and how we get that out in messaging. So it's really important to understand that a, a logo is just a, a little a memory recall point. Uh, when you're Nike, it's got a lot more value than when you're a small interior design firm. So what is brand? It's that thing that makes you different, better, and special. Um, that is very important to remember. Uh, many of us work in um, competitive industries where we have a lot of competition. We have a lot of people making wine racks. You might have a lot of people offering interior design or, or wine cellar building services. Understanding the brand is understanding what you do differently than them, what you do better, and what you are special with. That logo becomes a mark for it. The way you answer your phones becomes a mark for it. Everything else just kind of works around them. So the way that I would say that you want to really think about this, add the word value behind brand so that when you're talking about your company, when you're thinking about your company, you're thinking about its value and how you can be unique. You might be a, uh, the best uh, commercial wine cellar builder in Dallas, Texas, and that could be a brand value. You might be able to provide services about cooling and, and, and expertise and maybe filling the wine shelves themselves better than anyone else. Uh, and that's what you want to want to live right there. So what do you do that sets your, your service apart? Can you recite it? It's very important. Like you can spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort creating your brand value. It is useless if you don't know what it is, right? And it's useless if your team doesn't know what it is. So understanding what it is, like building it and then actually living it and talking about it, very important. And also, can you prove it? You know, it's great to say that you make the world's best hamburger. That's not a brand unless you have like quantifiable proof that you make the world's best hamburger, which nobody does. So you have to be able to essentially live and breathe what you're doing and also give people and your customers an element of proof. So here's where you can actually create one today. A lot of companies, we didn't have a brand value until about a year ago. We, we had some brand values in our minds, but we hadn't actually taken the, the effort to go through this. Um, so this is something that you can do with your, your thought leaders in your company. Uh, this can be you, a manager, a couple other people. It can be just you. But bring in the key folks in your company and have a brainstorm session and kind of napkin out what is important to your company and the values and come up with a really concise way that you can describe what you do better than everybody else. And so we're going to get into what we do as a company, Vintage You, as a case study. But just think about that thing. It should be one sentence, two sentences. Write something out from that brainstorm session stop, take a deep breath, come back and visit it in three days. Don't sit there and, and, and overthink it. Get something on, on paper, live it, breathe it, and then react to it in a couple of days and see where it lands. Once you've come up with that, that statement, and this is something, again, most of you who are in our network are probably not spending a lot of money on a branding agency, so we're assuming you're doing this yourselves. You can always change this in a few years when you have resources potentially to, to assign a, a brand agency to help you with it. And if you did a good job with this here, it's not gonna change all that much. They might help you nuance it, make it a little bit better. But the idea here is you know your business inside and out and you know when you're calling a, on a customer or a client or messaging to them, what sets you apart. Then assign support pillars. Figure out the two or three things that you can actually prove that you do that support that. What is it that sets you apart and what are the proof metrics that you have it? For us, we talk about quality a lot. One of the proof metrics is we have a lifetime guarantee, so we stand behind it. We also have a 15-point inspection piece every time we bring a product into the building to make sure it's up to standards. That is tangible, and I can tell someone that as proof, not just saying it's the best and just trust us. Because you know your product more than anybody else, you can be more effective than a brand agency at this. So again, don't worry about you know, enlisting in expensive services right now. Think about what you can bring to the table or your, your team leads or leaders that, that, that know, your, your, know, live and breathe and love your product or service better. So once you've done this, and this is something that, like I said, you come up with an hour brainstorm session, you write something out, live with it for three or four weeks or three or four days, and then, and then just stamp it. Then the, the, the piece here is, is the then what. You've got this pretty statement. You can put it on a... On a, on a plaque if you want, you can put it up on your wall, you can do whatever you need. But then you wanna do is you repeat it, often to everyone in your organization and outside of it, live this statement. Every person who works for your company doesn't need to be able to, to say this verbatim, they need to say this in a paraphrase form. They should be able to recite your brand value in their own words easily. 
And then the important part, and the reason we started off with this is all of your marketing efforts should include at least one aspect of it baked in. We're gonna to get to the next slide about what our brand value is of you to put this in there. But this picture here is a, a very subtle point to it. One of our support pillars, we have the best quality wine rack and we support that with our lifetime guarantee, like I mentioned, and then the 15 point inspection. And simply putting an Instagram story, putting the word quality in there is a very subtle way to hit that home. We don't need to get our entire two sentence, you know, paragraph in every ad, ad that we do every social media post, but we want to bake those elements in over and over and again so that we're cognizant of it and our customers, our potential customers are. So what is Vintage Views? So this is really where if you've been on our, our um, webinars before or you've spoken with us or you've seen our branding out on Instagram, Facebook, etc., you've probably seen this in one shape or form or another. But Vintage View modernized wine cellular design by, continue, by developing the Label Ford Wine Rack in 2001 and continues to innovate with artistic product development, quality, and industry best service. Vintage View is the preferred wine storage option for leading design and build professionals. It's a mouthful. It's something that we very rarely repeat as is, but you will see us tagging uh, design professionals in our Instagram posts. You will see us talking about our industry best service which we can, we can actually back up by with uh, customer service satisfaction uh, results by uh, actual things that we've gotten from our customers. So we can prove that the quality and then the artistic product development itself, we can prove by being the thought leader and the one that patented the label Ford wine rack. And, and so we can support these and we put these into action every single day. My team, very small team, we think about this every single day when we are posting an Instagram post, a Facebook post, and it informs our messaging. And you will never see this publicly very or very seldom see this publicly as is. But if you see our stuff through the course of a month, you're going to, to, to pull these in. So what about uh, fonts, color choices, and all those other things? So when you, if you were, have ever been pitched by a brand agency, they will put together a great package for you. And they'll give you all these things to put in your printed collateral and all that stuff. They're very important. But if you don't have the resources, time, effort, people on staff, money to, to, to do this, don't even worry about that right now. It's important at a certain point to make your stuff look good and, and feel like your brand, but don't let that stop from getting your message down pat and getting your message out there. A lot of people get stuck on these and they want a brand book. We lived with a good solid brand in my first four years without a, a formal brand book. It is super helpful to have now that I can give to a designer to help with stuff, but it's not important enough to stop doing what you're doing. So get that statement down, live it, understand it, make sure your team understands it, and then we can move on to the next thing. Customers. So this is something, again, could be a four hour webinar in and of itself. We're gonna give you the high level of what you need to know to act on this today. The idea being don't paralyze yourself with overthinking and trying to get too far down the rabbit hole. You wanna do this quickly. You can, you know, you'll see brand personas and those uh, catchy terms in the marketing world. And again, they are important when you have the time, resources, et cetera. But let's get there much quicker. Are you trying to go after a trade, you know, B2B trade organizations, trying to get leads and, and people that you can uh, nuance relationships with? Um, what do those people look like, generally speaking? Are you going to the consumers? Do you have any idea of like what they look like in terms of, you know, buying habits or messaging? Um, are they geographic based? You know, are you a company that only offers a service in Dallas or Austin or Miami, et cetera? Um, and then try and kind of just build together these traits. One of the great ways you can do this, and, and, and really when you say traits, a brand persona is something where you can literally go through and, and have a, a page once you're on every type of client you have with certain messaging tactics. You know, the quicker way to get there is once you identify your five or six types of clients, write down what you mean to them and how you can message them you know, one simple sentence so you can understand the difference. Like for Vintage View, when we're talking to a wine cellar builder, it's a little bit different than when we're talking to maybe an interior design firm or a home use, you know, end use customer. Product's the same, brand's the same, but our messaging, you know, our value is a little bit different to them based on the type of services that, that we provide and that they provide. A great way to do this is literally, you know, and I, and I hate to use clip art, but I did steal this on there because I didn't have a great clever Zoom thing. Um, Talk to your top clients and customers, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Spend a couple weeks literally just having 30 minute conversations. It's a great touch point, shows that you're you're caring. It's got some sales value to it. So it's not just about marketing. But just ask about, you know, what makes them tick in terms of making a buying decision for your service or product. 
first of all, how did they find you? Did they look on uh, Pinterest or did they just Google something? And you know, what motivated them to reach out? Was it the, the product? Was it the service offering? Was it desperation? You know, any of the above. And then how do they say yes to you? If you can answer those questions and you find any patterns with your five, six, seven people, and oftentimes you will find patterns really easily, then you have an idea of um, you know, what to focus on in your messaging. Which leads us to where are your customers, right? You've already, when you've gone through this exercise, you're gonna understand a lot of times where they're finding you. Um, when we look at the social media landscape, there are a million different logos out there representing a million different social streams. They all have inherent values and they're not all perfect for your business. A lot of people will make the mistake of, mistake of doing, um, you know, jumping on every single social media platform and failing miserably, uh, miserably at them all and then giving up because they didn't get any traction. So I've highlighted some, so this is kind of the, some big picture thinking about the main, main things and, and how they relate to the design build community, which I think is important because uh, I believe you know, most of you on this call are, are in that world. Um, word association, think of Facebook as a broadcast. Everybody's on Facebook. So in one way or another, you could reach anyone you want to do. Instagram is about inspiration. Uh, LinkedIn is about networking, Pinterest inspiration. Twitter is probably useless. Um, celebrities, politicians, um, well-known fingers use it well. Brands that are trying to connect with customers, not so much. YouTube's a broadcast piece, houses inspiration, and Google is about just having a good SEO kind of uh, background so you can see it. I highlighted Instagram, Pinterest, and house because those are where we find our community lives the most. Our direct consumer people are researching, looking for inspiration. Our B2B clientele, our interior design firms, our wine cellar building firms, et cetera, are using those uh, as galleries to, to reach customers and, and we find a lot of efficacy there. So we focus on those three as well as Facebook just because we have the resources to reach out as well. We know that there's a broad swath of, of people there. But understand where your folks are gonna be and focus on those instead of trying to be everywhere at once. So remember those conversations? Make sure when you're talking to those conversations that you had with your top customers, just ask them where do they find inspiration? You, you talk to them a little bit about where they find you but we went, we went through and we spent, um, you know, I want to say maybe six or seven total hours of, of, of uh, people power talking to some of our clientele, maybe 30 minute conversations each. And we just asked them, you know, where do they find new products? Where do they find new customers? Where do they find inspiration? And they all said generally the same thing. They, they nuanced a little bit between like a wine cellar builder, potentially and a, a custom home builder and maybe an interior designer, but they were all very much in that same range. Of uh, some of them let the customer bring them ideas from a Pinterest or a house gallery. Some looked, you know, would just whittle time away on Instagram and seeing who tagged them, et cetera. Um, but we we found pretty quickly that, you know, Twitter was useless, right? We found pretty quickly that um, if we focused on Pinterest and Instagram, we were gonna get the most bang for our buck. Um, and then, you know, we keep Facebook in there because we've done some targeted ad campaigns that have brought in a lot of uh, actual leads to discuss with people. But um, you know, most of our people were telling us Pinterest, Instagram, a little bit depending on their clients, a little bit depending on their industry. And then you need to commit and stay focused to these. So what I would say, what does that mean? Um, my team is, uh, you've got two full-time employees. We have a, a contract uh, graphic designer. We have a, a contract videographer. And we have an agency to run some of our Amazon business globally. Uh, that's a lot of resources and not every company is as lucky as we are to have that. So we understand that. So figure out what you can commit to your resources. Are you a one person shop and do you need to be doing it all? Okay, great. You need to commit to something and we need to make sure it's, it's something that is replicatable um, and, and sustainable. So if you don't have the ability to do a full-time person or a department, you can still be successful. Can you commit one hour a day, right? If you're a small business, spend one hour a day doing some of the tactics that we're about to get into. Um, but do that one hour a day every single day. The hardest thing to do is post once on Facebook and then come back six months later and post again and expect that to make a meaningful difference. Even if you don't know what the heck you're doing and you're posting something every damn, damn day, like that's going to start to give you some some traction show people you're in business and you'll also learn a lot as you get to go there like when something doesn't get liked you'll be like oh, that wasn't worth doing you can do trial by fire but the only way you could do that and see your audience grow and see your demographics hit where you want to is if you're doing this every single day so can you do an hour a day 
please say yes to that. And if, uh, if you can't, do you have someone on your team that can do an hour a day? Do you have someone that can do more? And then just scale up from there. If you're doing marketing well, you're going to see the business grow and then you can dedicate more resources to it because you're seeing a return. And the other thing is if, if you don't have the time or the expertise, or frankly, if you just don't have the desire, you want to worry about P&L and you want to worry about getting orders out and you want to worry about selling or whatever those other metrics are that, that drive you, you can engage with an agency or a contract person. And some of these things aren't even that expensive. You can get on a retainer for maybe a thousand bucks a month with a good contract employee or worker. They can do all this for you. Um, you'll just need to be able to interact with them and make sure you can get them specific assets and requests. You can also spend two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month easily. So, you know, scale up and, and figure out what's right for your business. All right. So now you, the idea is, is you have your brand value. You have your understanding of your customers and where they are. Um, you know that you're going to dedicate an hour a day or more or some resources thereof. Then the key is what are your objectives? In theory, you have a business plan or a business idea and a business motivation and, and big picture goals for that. You should come up with three to five marketing objectives that fall in line with that. Are you looking for new customers? Full stop. Question. Are you looking for repeat business? Do you want to engage with your current customers? Do you just want brand awareness because you're selling a product and, you, and you're trying to just get above your, your competition? You're looking for referrals, ways for people to um, tell other people about you, that quote unquote word of mouth. Do you have an e-commerce store? Something else, right? Fig figure out what three or four things you think are most important to your business to focus on and then think about them a lot. So with that, you can come up with tactics. We'll talk about some, some tactics in the, in the final piece of this. And, and in general, you can come up with just tactics that make sense to you. Like a tactic could be a postcard mailer that, that gives uh, every one of your customers a 5% discount for repeat business, right? That's a simple tactic that would live under one of those um, if, if, if repeat business was one of your objectives. Uh, new, if you're looking for new customers, this could be a Facebook ad. This could be a real just dedication to getting your uh, message and lead forms out there on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter over and over and over, or sorry, not Twitter, uh, how's it and Pinterest over and over and over again. But the key here is once you figure out what those three objectives are, when you are publishing something on Facebook, when you are sending out a catalog, when you are uh, sending out a, a, a postcard, when you are sending out an email, make sure it falls specifically in line with one of those three or four objectives. You know, if your objectives are driving e-commerce sales, uh, finding new business and getting um, uh, repeat business from your, your current clientele and you want to focus on those three things. Don't start an international effort to grow your brand. You know, that's a pretty dramatic shift, but don't, don't do that, right? If you, if you feel yourself needing to get pulled in another direction, decide whether you want to refocus your, your objectives. But if it's not one of those objectives, don't do it. Make sure your messaging is on point with like, hey, I'd like to do business with you. Hey, I'd like to do more business with you or hey, uh, buy this uh, widget from my e-commerce store. Very, very important. If, if they don't align with those, you're going to get distracted and you're not going to be effective with that. This is where you bring your brand in. So you know that you want to reach new customers as one of your objectives. Make sure that everything that you're stating there where you're trying to bring them in is in line with your brand. If your brand is like a high-end uh, residential interior designer focusing on kitchens, Make sure you are always talking about finding new customers. You know, when you talk about finding new customers, you're talking about kitchen inspiration, kitchen ideas, trends, things that are in there on that high end thing. Don't don't focus on DIY quick fixes to your you know storage space. Right. Focus on the things that you want to sell them, so you get the right people in the door. So just always remember that. That's where it's always in the back of their their head. Here's a quick um, uh, case study uh, that we have launched to uh, just kind of illustrate. This was actually been a pretty big effort of ours in the last couple of months. But our object, one of our objectives is to grow name brand awareness to the design build community. You know, we want to become the quote unquote polar of wine rack of the wine rack industry so that when people are making decisions on wine racks, when the design community, the wine cellar building community is thinking about wine racks, they're thinking about us as that name brand that is trusted and, and lives up to that brand value. So to do that, we created an influencer program to encourage Instagram tagging. So in our conversations with a lot of our um, design build professionals, we found that they said often they find new products by seeing what is tagged in a, a photo of a, a 
one of the design firms they follow, one of the architecture firms they follow, et cetera. So our thought was, all right, if we want to grow our brand name, what better way to do is essentially get these interior design community people as, as ambassadors for us. Now, unlike traditional influencer marketing, so if you've heard that buzzword and you're selling a t-shirt, for example, it's very simple to engage with a, a well in, you know, a well-followed Instagram personality, send, send them a t-shirt, work out whatever metrics you want to work on the back end and have them wear that t-shirt in a Instagram post, right? That's very easy. You can send that to them. We can't just send a wine seller to someone. It doesn't work that easily. And interior designers and architects and design professionals don't typically like um, charge money to be an influencer. That's not something that they do as a business model. So how could we do, how could we uh, essentially encourage them? They were already uh, posting photos of our, our product and their beautiful projects. We just wanted them to put that little at symbol in the photo. And so it would show up under tagged as you kind of see in that, that photo on the right. So we worked on an incentive program with some discounting on some projects. And we went from having about a dozen uh, design firms and, and design build professionals and wine cellar builders tagging us per month to uh, 70 in the last four weeks. So that did a couple things. It one, it reaffirmed our status as a top wine rack pr product for, for the design build community. Any consumer can come on and, and go to these beautiful pages of interior design firms, et cetera, see who they've tagged, see Vintage View, and they associate our name. So that, that grows our name brand. And then the other side of it, we see that the people that follow them. So a lot of times, you know, you're looking up to another design company, another wine cellar building company, another custom home builder, and you're seeing what they're using. So it, it gives them that name recognition. So we got name recognition to their followers, to our, so it really hit that objective. This is not something we were able to do this in a way that does not take us a lot of time either. It's something that we kind of gener generally remind people in and, and build those habits of, and then give them a nice high five reward um, when they're done. All right, so now we're gonna finish up with some getting your hands dirty tactics. So hopefully with each one of those sections, you can think about something identifiable that you could start thinking about doing in the next couple of weeks. These are things you can start doing today. And just in, keeping in mind that you want, even if in the absence of a brand value, you should have an understanding of your brand, what you, messaging you wanna get and who you wanna hit. So if you're doing these ahead of the first four kind of steps, just keep what you think your brand value and you think your customers are in line and then you can tweak those um, as you get the stuff more formalized. All right, the 10 by nine strategy, the tactic. This is uh, the way, the best single way you can grow your audience on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, if you're using Twitter. Um, one of the, my previous jobs, I was the, uh, the channel manager for examiner.com. And what that meant is I ran all the content for examiner.com for the food and, and beverage uh, content channels. I had 3,000 writers working under me. Each one of them got paid a penny per click that they could drive to their website. So part of my job was giving them ideas to write, but also giving them great tactics and great ways for them to build audience. Because the more people they got to the pages, the more people, the more they got paid. And one of the analogies that Macaulay gave to that stuck with this is um, when you're working in the digital space, think of it as going to an online um, uh, chamber of commerce after hours business party. If you've walked into one of those, think of two people. The one person that comes in there, shakes your hand, hands you a business card, says, see you later, give me a call. Then they go to the next person, they hand a business card, they see you later, give me a call. They might work the room and pass out 100 business cards. They will get zero calls back. The person who is there, who is doing um, the exact opposite. Can I, can I, can I, oh, can I show you something really quick? Uh, yes. I, I saw a bunny in the poking one. You did. So this is the joy of working from home. My son pops in on all my webinars. This is Mateo. Mateo, that's a great story. I love you. And I'm on, I'm on with people. So I need you to, you can see, I need you to go in the other room. Thank you, Mateo. Joys of pandemic working from home. I apologize for that, but he's pretty cute. So that adds, that adds a little bit to it. Um, so the second person in that, that chamber of commerce, they go, they grab a beer from the bar, they get into a conversation, they talk about uh, the Denver Broncos, they talk about um, life, and then they have a connection with that person about maybe something that's sort of business related. They chat for 15 minutes. At the end of that, it says, oh, you know, it's really interesting. My service might fit your needs at some point. Great talking about to the Denver Broncos. Here's my business card. That is a connection that actually has a chance of lasting. And you might have four of those in an hour chamber of commerce, but you, you actually have four connections and you'll get calls back. Same thing in digital space. So the 10 by nine strategy, 
pick hashtags that are appropriate to your business. For us, it's hashtag wine cellars, hashtag in interior inspiration, stuff like that. Find the 10 most relevant and comment, go on to them every single day from your Instagram company page, whatever, and comment on the top nine posts in each hashtag. Doesn't have to be anything related to your business in terms of like for us, I comment on stuff and my colleague comments on stuff about kitchen design, um, you know, commercial residential design that doesn't include wine racks. We just look at it and say, that is a fantastic use of marble in that space. We really love, what's that backdrop you're using? What's the backsplash? Something like that. Engage with them. Not just an emoji. You see a lot of people doing this with the thumbs up emoji. That's the person hitting their business cards like this at the party where the person that's taking uh, 30 seconds to bring a meaningful conversation is going to engage. If you do this every single day, your audience will grow exponentially and quicker and with better prospects than anybody else. It's better than paying for clicks. It's better than the, uh, the emoji, you know, just trying to get people to follow. Um, if you do this, you will grow. Um, that will take you two hours, could potentially up to two hours a day to do that. So scale that down to meet your resources. You might decide that you can only do one or two hashtag per day, and that's totally fine. You might find that some of your hashtags fill up. So like the top ones you've already commented on, and a clever way to do that, if you comment on something, hit the like button so that you mentally know it if you see it again. Um, just go to the most recent and do nine there. Um, either way, you're finding people doing that stuff. So just comment on that. Um, you see on this right hand, all that time sourcing stone paid off. Such a unique design. The person in that, in that uh, you know, uh, JL Interiors mentioned how much time they spent looking for stone. So I, I commented directly on what they said in the photo. Um, we do this every single day and our, we've gone from 2,000 followers on Instagram a year ago to uh, a little over 5,000 very targeted. That number is not huge, but it's meaningful to us because they're all in our core uh, demographic of design and build professionals. And we did that without paying money for it. So we essentially went up 150% in our audience in a year by hustle. And a quick note on that, don't be worried about how many followers you have be worried about who is following you. Doesn't matter if, if you have 100,000 followers on Instagram and none of them are important to your business, then you essentially have zero. If you have 100 followers on Instagram and they're all important to your business, you're far better off. So just always quantity is not as important as quality. All right, email. Email more than you think. We always get people, oh, I don't wanna bother people in the email inboxes. I don't wanna do that. Uh, that is kind of uh, just, just email. Just email, email, email. Um, we do about a once a week thing. We have subscription preferences set up so that if they don't want to, if our clientele doesn't want, if they want to unsubscribe, they can. And great. That just means they don't want that information and we're fine with that. It's not personal. If they want us twice a month, they can get that twice a month. So if they want us three times a month, they can get that. So we just kind of mix that in. The key here is don't be salesy in these. If you put in really meaningful things, and it can just be a paragraph of like a great, if you're an interior designer working in a kitchen, the kitchen remodel industry, the coolest sink that you found this month as inspiration. Just write about that. It's not a sales pitch. You're not telling them to buy that from you. You're telling them that you are a resource for them and you hope that this is valuable to them. If you find you know, five great uh, uh, basement remodels on Instagram and link to those, that is great value that you're bringing to them and you're becoming a resource and people don't flag that as spam. They will flag it as spam if, they see, if you're like, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product. So just bring content, bring resources. And then the great thing is always put a link in there of how to contact you to request a catalog, request some sort of service. They will do that if you're giving them good information because they're going to start to trust you as a valuable resources. We send out a lot of case studies. We send out a lot of, um, you know, project features. We send out schedules of, you know, how we're going to be interacting uh, with our webinars, things that we're not selling them, but they come and buy to us because they like what they see. All right, then the other content, you need to create as much content as you can. This is probably the scariest single thing for a, a small business owner is creating a lot of content because it seems overwhelming. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, if you ever see uh, his stuff on LinkedIn, on Facebook, um, he's a, a, a mastermind in the, in the uh, marketing world, started in the wine world. So I've always had a passion for the wine and the marketing side with following him. He suggests 64 unique pieces of content a day. And that's like, whoa way too much. Uh, it, it, it seems like it, but you can actually come very close to that without breaking a sweat. Um, repurposing your stuff and using it across different streams is a great way to use it unique to that, that content stream. It doesn't take much time. 
An example, if you have a project that you have three photos of, here's a way, I mean, you can seriously, you do an Instagram story, post those in with a cool little like, you know, one of the, you know, a poll question that you can do on Instagram, you know, want this in your basement, yes or no, tag them in the next one, you know, and, and run through that. That's three pieces of content. Then you put uh, the most beautiful piece in your Instagram feed for an Instagram post, writing a little bit more in detail about the project. That's four. You can write a blog piece for it. That's five. You can then post that blog post on Facebook. That's six. You can post that on LinkedIn. That's seven. You can post that on um, Instagram. That's eight. You can create a house gallery with the same stuff, just putting those in there. That's nine, 10, 11 with those three photos. You can add a Facebook post just saying, look at this great thing, that's 12, or I'm losing track now. You can link that house gallery that you had, that's 13. You can see how this easily, I could probably create with three photos, 15 to 20 pieces of unique content without, um, without spending a lot of time, right? This is something I could do in probably 15 minutes. Um, we will send out, we've got actually the great, the, the Gary Vaynerchuk deck that we spoke about. I can send that to you guys um, after this as well. And just shows you how easily he puts out 64 pieces of content, probably in an hour. So again, these are things you can do by repurposing with your content. Just do this uh, daily or regularly, and then you'll be able to really grow across whatever those targeted, um, targeted uh, social media and digital streams. And then, uh, tags, hashtags, and more. This is a great strategy as well. So we talked about this actually 10 by nine hashtag strategy. Um, one of the things like if you ever hear, uh, and I'll butcher this, but if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, do you, do, does it make a sound? That same philosophy says, if you put my product is great on Facebook and leave it as is, no one is going to see that. If you put a better message on there, still it's gonna be hot, tough for people to see it. You have to make your post discoverable. How do you do that? And it, there's a lot of functions that make it discoverable. That means that when someone searches, so for example, at a location, don't do New York City because there's gonna be 5 million things that are tagged location. Do, um, do a, a neighborhood of New York City if you're in there because there'll be fewer people. And by, when, you tag, when you put that in there as a location on Facebook or Instagram, anyone who clicks on one of those from some other post might discover you. Um, add in all of these hashtags, come up with a list of hashtags that are important for your business that come in line with your brand value that you discussed. Put those in every single one. So anytime someone clicks on interior designs or hashtag wine room, from another post, there's a chance that they can see us in most recent or top, depending on how well it's performing. It's discoverable. More people are going to come in and see that. Tag a friend, tag a partner. If you work with someone that you like and you know, like a, another uh, a product manufacturer, tag their product, tag them if you think they'll like it. Don't be that person that tags 75 people in the photo, but just tag a couple of people because then you're guaranteeing a couple of people are going to see it. They're going to link on it if it was meaningful of content for them then you know that they're going to open it, maybe interact with it. If you do those things, you'll go from you know, two people seeing it to 10 people if you have no audience. If you have some audience, you go from 10 to 100. Um, those types of things are really gonna help you sing. So just make yourself discoverable. It takes virtually no time. You can set the stuff up in advance and you will get that uh, extra leverage every time you post something. And then finally, the last tactic. Um, this became something of an aha moment. So we go live all the time now. We never did this pre-COVID-19. Uh, and uh, we just didn't really think about it. We had a lot of ways to do video and stuff. We had a lot of things we could capture and get with uh, in our HQ. In, you know, in absence of that, since we've all been working remotely, we wanted to figure out ways that we could connect and create meaningful content. So we've done this a couple of ways. A couple of ways. One, we just created a, an Instagram and Facebook weekly office hours where we go live. We take our phones, our best friend. I pop on the screen. I come up with a five-minute topic that is... Um, important to our clientele. Yesterday was how expensive is a wine cellar? We went through, you know, wine rack costs and some big picture spending things and 30 people watched it. And then we'll save that and we'll repurpose it and put it in 20 other people, 20 other ways and a thousand people will end up watching it by the end of that. We encourage people to ask questions. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the important thing is we put good content out there. When you put something live, it shows up in different parts of the feed so you get more discoverable. So again, that term discoverable. Um, use things so we've also been using uh, we've been connecting with our clients we've been offering them um essentially a 15 minute platform if they schedule with us we can do a q a with them so uh, i send them i use a, a, a an app called be live i think it costs us 20 bucks a month 
and it allows me to do one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with another person via Facebook. We do these two times a week. We connect with um, uh, the wineries that have our wine racks. We connect with design build professionals. We, we, cre we create a connection with them. So for us, we're always trying to build brand loyalty. So it's great when we can connect with one of our clientele, like they see our face, they feel loved because we've gotten something that goes out there to a thousand people and they're really happy about that. And then on top of that, we create meaningful content. We talk about uh, a wine cellar builder in um, Southern California, what trends that that person is seeing. Um, how do they think COVID is going to affect it? Because that's timely. What's their favorite project? Can they talk about their inspiration? These are really meaningful things for people who are thinking about wine cellars. And you could replicate that. It takes five minutes to schedule it. And it takes as long as you're willing to sit on, on uh, a camera with them to, to record it. And then maybe another five minutes to repurpose it and send it out. So you can have uh, you know, this great thing that goes out and gets seen by a thousand people and builds brand loyalty and connections and all that stuff for about 25 minutes of work. So um, think about those things. They're, they're easy and simple to do. The technology is really easy. Don't worry about being live and stammering or anything like that. Everyone does it. We all look really funny looking at ourselves in, the, in a camera. I've gotten used to seeing all the gray hair, hairs in my beard when I'm doing close-ups, uh, but it's fun, it's engaging, and we learn a lot about our clients. So, so really easily uh, attainable stuff, and your phone is your best friend because it can do it all. All right, so we took about uh, 41 minutes in this dry run through. So uh, I, I really thank you guys for, um, for being the guinea pigs. I would appreciate uh, any feedback of things that we missed, things that we uh, went too fast on, things that didn't seem relevant. If you didn't, you know, hopefully you come up with some actionable stuff. And from there, you know, that's really what we're trying to build here. Since we only had 30 minutes, it turned into 40. We missed paid campaigns. We missed CRMs like Salesforce and other big data stuff. We missed marketing automation, we missed ROI. There are a lot of great resources and free webinars and stuff like that you can take through partners like that that we, um, we will uh, look to get out in your hands so that you can take these from, from other partners that are a bit, little bit more expertise in that to learn what you need to learn. But if you do the things that we just talked about today, spend a week or two building your brand value and, and understanding your messaging from there, and then just getting tactics, tactics, tactics of diving in and posting, you're gonna be better off today than you were yesterday. Here's a little bit of homework. So we are offering, um, I, uh, my team and I will happily offer a little bit of extra uh, services to you because uh, we want uh, to work more closely with you. If you decide to, to take an event, write your new brand value out. Um, we're happy to offer our opinion on it and essentially give you a good, you know, we'll get on the phone and do a 15 minute consult with you. Uh, we've been doing these for, for years with a number of com uh, different uh, contexts. My colleague, uh, Dana, who's came right from the uh, ad agency world, has a, a lot of experience with a, a range of brands that, that I don't as well. So we have some great expertise. Happy to offer that as a complimentary service uh, just because we wanna be better partners. Um, if you want us to check out how you're doing on, on social, just tag us. Um, send us a note in a DM that says, hey, how, do, how did this land? We're happy to provide our feedback. On top of that, we'll interact with it, we'll share it, and we'll get it out there for you. Don't forget that we do this uh, six times a month, actually seven if you include our uh, credit course. Vintage.com backslash get that dash train is where you'll get all those resources and schedules. Um, please email me, please email Dana, please email your sales rep if you have any questions, comments. Uh, our goal, uh, if you go back to those support pillars is uh, one of our, our goals is to provide, um, you know, we provide customer service that's unlike anything in the industry as part of our product offering. And we mean that. So if you have a question, comment, need helping placing an order, consulting, figuring out how to make your business stronger with us, we're here for you from marketing to sales to ops. So let us know what we can do for you. Thank you very much for spending the, uh, the morning with us. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I hope the, uh, your local community is opening up safely and smoothly and, and all those good vibes sending your way. Thanks again and we will see you soon.